Hey everybody, welcome back to Hold My Landscape. As you can see, I am outdoors right now. So today we will be doing some portraits using my old time favorite lenses. The first one is the 85 mm F1.4 Mark II. And the second one is the Samyang 135 mm F1.8. So we will sort of compare it, what sort of images we will get from them and what are the differences. So roll in. While we were doing the intro for this video, my son had a great idea to play in the mud. So look at him. Look at him. Oh my God, what did you do? <laughs> in general, you can take pretty much the same portraits with both lenses, but of course there are differences with them. So the first one I'm gonna be using is the Samyang 85 mm F1.4 Mark II. So with this one, this is great for beginners. If you wanna try doing some sort of storytelling, very creamy bokeh portraits, because this one will give you that effect. Plus you don't need to stand too far from your subject. That's the difference with the 135. So the communication with this one is still amazing. So let's try and show you this one first and we'll have to call my son here. Come on. And he's <laughs> got tic tac in his pocket. So we'll start shooting here by this water behind me. Let's go. What I love with the Samyang 85mm is it creates such a nice bokeh and it has this kind of vintage rendering on it and if i color grade that one it just has this extra effect that makes the photo so beautiful and i'm going to compare with the same location with the 135 so let me switch the lens so i can show you guys Now I'm using the 135 millimeter and as you can see, I'm a bit further away from my subject if I want to get the same composition, which is great because I'm giving him a lot of space so he will ignore me and he will sort of concentrate on what he's doing. It's very candid, which I love. With a location like this, with a lot of busy backgrounds, like as you can see, there's loads of trees behind us, a lens with a nice background separation would do best. So the 85mm and the 135mm is perfect in places like this. But I'm going to show you how the bokeh looks like. So I'm going to take the same portraits of my son and then see the differences. With an 85 millimeter, the background is nicely blurred already, but not that blur. You can still have a sense of location. You can still see some trees in the background, but it's not that disturbing. So with 135, it's even much better. But for that, I'm gonna have to switch with that one. Shoo, whoosh, now I'm back. I have the 135 millimeter in my camera right now. Let's test it out and compare the bokeh of this one. Bokeh, 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 what I love the most. Peter doesn't like it, but I love it. <laughs> Go on tears. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> now I'm roughly stood to the same composition I did with the 85mm. So for this one and get the same composition, I gotta have to move back and do a moonwalk if I can. <laughs> okay, there we go. I think. Yeah, pretty much. No, a little bit more. Okay. Okay, tear. Pretend to like shoot shoot. Got a prop for him so it looks nice. Lots of branches here. Okay, one thing you gotta have to consider when shooting locations like this is make sure there are no trees coming out of your subject's head because it doesn't look good. Sometimes it's kind of challenging to find that composition. But, you know, we'll, we'll try our best. We'll try our best. All right, with 125, as I've said, you have to make sure that no trees come out of the head. But with 125 millimeters, since it blurs it out really well, it's not that kind of disturbing. 
if you know what I'm saying. So it's great. I love this lens, but I got to do the sign language on him for him to hear me. But he can still hear me because it's pretty much quiet here. But if you're in a busy location where there's a lot of sounds going on, your subject might not be able to hear you. So sometimes I would like just try and mirror the poses that I want them to do. But for this instance, very simple. So I'm getting a lot of comments lately asking me how I pop the colors on my editing. So that comes a lot with the locations I'm shooting at. So for example, if I'm shooting in autumn time where the colors are really nice, I don't need to worry about that because in post process I can just like lift whatever color is available. But what if you're shooting in a location like this, especially now that the winter just ended. So the trees doesn't even have leaves on them. It just have like this dry, brown, boring color. So how I combat that is I dress up my models in a colorful way. So this time I dress up my son in a blue jacket because that's sort of in contrast with the brownie orange color. So I'll make him pop. So that's what you can do. Okay, it's very simple, very easy. It's kind of like color theory, really, if you study that one. Very simple. There we go. Okay, so if you want to pop up more color, but then you're in a location like this, as I've said, you just want to make sure that you find those extra bit of color that you find. Like I was able to find a green moss right there, plus the sun is lighting up on it, which makes the color even more brighter. So the, the tip will be is that you have to make sure that the location, the spot and the subject is lit properly. In that way, the color will show up even better. And in post process, it will be easier to pop them out. So as I'm reviewing the images I've just taken, there's practically not much difference with 85 and 125 millimeter. I, I mean, in a way, you can still take the same portrait. There's just 125 is just has better background separation and bokeh, obviously, but they're sort of just the same effect. So you can never go wrong in going for either of them. You can still get the same photo, which is really amazing. I love it. So that's the end of the photo shoot. Let us go home and look at the pictures in the computer. And I'm going to show you real quick on how to pop colors on editing. Let's go. Hey guys, now I am home in my computer. So now we're going to take a look at the images we've taken for the day and compare them basically. So as you can see on your screen, I already have the photos and this is the particular two I'm gonna be comparing. So the first one is the Samyang 85 millimeter F1.4 mark two and i'm using on one photo roll but for some reason it recognizes it as the sony 85 millimeter g master and even on the samyang 135 millimeter f1.8 it shows us a 35 millimeter sony 35 millimeter which is weird anyway let's go on the first one so the first one is the samyang 85 millimeter as you can see, it already has a nice blur in it, but you can still see like sort of the surrounding. With an 85 millimeter, you still include the surrounding and have a sense of location on your photo still, but still has a nice blur on it. So it's not very distracting. As I've said, with locations like this, with loads and loads of trees, the background can get very distracting, but the 85 millimeter did a great job in blurring this out when i switched to 135 millimeter the direct light is not there anymore because the clouds covered the sunlight so it sort of diffused it for me which i like in a way so yes it affected the photo a little bit but as you can see in comparison that in 85 millimeter you can see a lot of the background still but with 135, it is more compressed. So with the 85 millimeter, you can still see the tree here at the back and more of this, like this, this trees thing on the right side, which is not showing anymore on the 135 millimeter. And what I like about the 135 millimeter is it has a really nice clean bokeh, which makes the editing really 
fun to do. So there's this like really tiny tree in between me and my son and on the 85 millimeter is very this thing you can actually like see it but with the 135 millimeter is sort of like lost in the bokeh. Not really lost you can see it's there but yes it's been blurred out already which is nice. This is the image that we'll be working on and I've already prepped this one so I have removed some things I don't like on the image already and this is the white balance I'm going to start working on. So basically when I'm editing I'm using the presets that I've created for my own images and I'm going to use it for this edit but I'm going to explain why I'm using them and what they are basically. So let's start. So every time the first thing I use is gradient map and I named this one called warm afternoon and as you can see it does warm up my image and I'm using three shades of color for this one. So gradient map is a powerful tool that I use on all of my images. I mean you should start using it as well. It's amazing. All right, so this one creates a warm tone on my photo and as I've said when I am color grading and popping colors it has to do a lot on the available colors that are already on the photo that I've taken so for this instance the green mossy thing on the tree that he's sitting on and some of the green vegetation at the back so we're gonna pop that out so it's already there and also his clothes which is like blue but when you do this one you have to be very careful on the skin on the clothes because you don't want everything to be like yellow if you're using like warm tone so the next one i'm going to use is a color pop which is basically just hsl it's this one right here it's just a saturation shift it's at 30 percent there is no correct number but this is the one that i am using and with this one i am selecting some parts that i don't want to be so bright so for example i don't want his skin to be so yellow so i'm gonna remove that from him with a brush tool in black color and also on the camera and also on his coat because as you can see his coat is blue and also his boots are blue and you don't want that to be warm you want it to be the color that as it is it is blue and it should stay blue otherwise it will look unnatural and it just doesn't look good the next one I'm using is just to brighten up the image even more and I'm using curves on that one and this one I called bright warm and it also does warm up my photo even more but not that much just brightens it okay so I'm gonna teach you a trick to how to make your viewers look at your subject so what I do is making sure that my subject is brighter than like the rest of the photo i think it's easier for me to show how it is done so after i use the curves i usually invert it and then just paint it on the parts where i want it to be so for example like here i just want it on him there you go it just makes it even better so you look there more and it suits the sunlight that is lighting up on the rims of the tree and also a backlit on his hair it just looks even better okay so this is pretty much like almost done so the next thing you're gonna have to do is basically use touch and burn i always use touch and burn on my photos because it pops the image now it accentuates the photo even more if you know what i mean so it has to do so with dodge and burn the trick is you dodge only the areas that already has light on them and then burn the areas that are already in the shadowy places shadowy places sound like what simba's dad said to him but yeah i'll do that 50 percent you have to be very careful with dodge and burn because you don't want to overdo it because then it'll look so weird i'm gonna also dodge like the hair light to make it pop even further here and there there we go and with burn the same 50 percent we're just burning the shadow area like this see very easy straightforward but if you're gonna do this properly you're gonna have to like zoom it in there and really go in the detail which sometimes can take a long time to do but it is worth it it'll make your photos pop and it'll just be amazing it'll look a lot like a painting so this is the trick for it 
but I'm obviously doing everything quick. Otherwise, you're gonna have to watch this for like half an hour, just me <laughs> touching pretty. So that is the quick tip on how to pop colors on your photo and how to make them more bright and look colorful. There's a lot of tools you can use in like Affinity or Photoshop. Just play around with them and see what fits you better. For me, in my workflow, this one fits me best. So I hope you like that one. So that is the quick comparison between the Samyang 85mm f1.4 Mark II and the Samyang 135mm f1.8. So you've seen how you can use them. So if you ask me which one is better, uh, there is no better lens because they both have their own strength and weaknesses. So with the 85mm, you can be close to your subject and be able to instruct them and talk to them effectively and still have a sense of location so you can include more of your surrounding in the photo whereas with the 135 millimeter it has more creamier cleaner bokeh and much more focus on your subject but at the same time you have to stand a little bit further from your subject so if you're a beginner i think it'll be best to go with the 85 millimeter first because with this one this is where you can practice how you compose your photo on how to post your subjects on how to instruct them properly and then go to 105 millimeter because then you will have that experience already on how you want your photos to look like because that's basically how i did it so if you're working with more experienced models 135 millimeter is great for that since they need minimal instructions when it comes to posing so you can be far away from them and just like mirror what kind of poses you want them to do but if you are working with people that doesn't have this kind of experience and people that needs more guidance and instructions when it comes to posing 85 millimeter will be perfect for that because you'll be close to them you'll be able to talk to them and at the same time 85 millimeter does a nice background separation already so yeah if you want to learn more about these lenses individually please check out our review of them i have linked all of them in our description box and if you want to have a chance of winning a brand new samyang 85 millimeter f1.4 mark ii and a weekend duffel bag from langley which is the same brand i'm using for this video just go ahead to hold Limited's facebook page they're running a giveaway at the moment i'm gonna link everything on the description box and you'll see the instructions right there so that's it for today's video if you enjoyed this please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and if you still haven't please don't forget to subscribe to our channel i'll see you guys on the next one bye bye